compliance with Chapter 231, Public Law 1970, uh, 1975, entitled Local Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this board meeting has been provided as specified in the Act. The proper notice of this public meeting was provided in a notice of January 7, 2019. Said notice was posted at the entrance of the Board of Education offices, mailed to the Nutley Township Clerk, advertised in the Nutley Sun and Star Ledger on January 17, 2019, posted on the district website. <clears throat> this is an official meeting. Can we uh, stand for the please? Beyond that, beyond that. 
have that picture at the end of tonight. There will be a um, testimonial on the board agenda, so we hope you can stay while they read about you. Okay? Thanks, Joe. The following staff have served the Nutley Public Schools for more than 25 years. Ms. Robin Powell, our coordinator of health and physical education, grades pre-K to 12. <laughs> Mr. Phil Nicolette, our manager of buildings and grads. <laughs> Linda Mascaratola. Radcliffe School, second grade. Eileen <laughs> O'Mara, Anna Cock, first grade.
caring for the Nutley community. We will absolutely be missed. Thank you. with this year's awards. opportunity to present the 2019 Nutley Educational Foundation Awards. NEF is a 501c3 organization helping to provide our district with educational equipment and programming beyond what the school budget can provide. Over the past several years, we have been able to fund an outdoor classroom, provide seed money for a fall play, and a robotics program provide new percu percussion instruments, a washer and dryer for the special needs department, build a greenhouse, new sound lighting and uh, sound and lighting equipment, right here for the middle school, an art kiln, a wellness program, Lego robotics and coding with bebots. We also introduced our students from fourth to eighth grade to TREPS. TREPS is an entrepreneur after school program culminating in a marketplace where our children marketed the goods that they created. This year, we are proud to announce that through the donations from Nutley, these are donations from all of our Nutley people, businesses, they all come forward. NEF will be funding sensory pathways, a 3D printer, a musical theater club, instruments, stands, and bars, all for the grammar schools, a licensing package for a musical, reconstruction of the biology club greenhouse, and dollars for a trivia and gaming club here at the middle school, several items for the special ed rise program and the coffee shop, assistance for the DECA state trip, and new band room sound equipment at the high school bringing our total support this year to $20,568. Over the past three years, we have provided our school district from donors and donations from people just like you with more than $58,000 of much needed programs and equipment. This is all accomplished by a group of dedicated people who sit on the NEF Board of Trustees. Sam Flytel, Molly, come on up, Catillo, Carol Gallagher, Chris Lassander, <laughs> and Blair, uh, Blair, you know I'm going to kill your name, 
Is that Paul? Come on up. Did I miss anyone? Is it Chris? Come on up. I know you're going to take a picture, but I want everyone to see. These people work tires tirelessly at helping NEF get the news out there. We have a lot of members. There are actually 16 members, and Dr. Glazer is a member of our board as well. And uh, we are very grateful for the generosity. Isn't that nice? <laughs> For the generosity of our donors, at the center of every great community is a strong school system. Every strong school system has a powerful education foundation to help support that school, so every child can be afforded the best education possible. We are striving to reach even higher goals to support what our teachers need in programs, equipment, and structural components to provide our students the best educational opportunities and experiences. Having the right job, have, no, having the right tools for the job is paramount. And we owe a huge debt of gratitude to our teachers. Our teachers who bring their training, their passion, their knowledge, and their dedication that it takes to teach our children Therefore, it's our obligation to provide our teachers the tools they need to enhance the learning experience for our children and to do it in facilities that foster comfortable and a secure environment. The award application programs are, the program uh, is due March of each year. We do this annually. Take some time to think about what you need fill out our online application teachers, and then NEF will do the rest. Please help NEF to become one of the top New Jersey educational foundations who raise hundreds of thousands of dollars, not 58, hundreds of thousands of dollars, so we can really make a difference and boast about what we already know. Nutley is the best and deserves the best. Thank you very much. for tonight with their special programs. If they would just come up and stand, Mr. Vic, we have a, some, a lot of our teachers. They asked and they received. needed for you to do the best you can for our children, and we appreciate that greatly. Let's hear it for them. Thank you. <laughs> one, of, one of our opportunities to bring the community into NEF is on Thursday this week. We have the Sip, Saver, and Support event at the Nutley Museum. It starts at 6.30, and it goes till 9.30. Nine, like Carol's reminding me, nine. Um, and because we have to be at the museum by 10. So, <laughs> so, but the point is, is that that's where we really provide all of our individual uh, teachers with the opportunity to say a few words to everyone and we want to thank the community at large and it's an opportunity for everyone to come together and see what we're really accomplishing for our school district. So thank you, thank you to everyone. We, you can stand up and accept the chat. <laughs> You're the president.
Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Yemens, Mayor Scarpelli, can I ask you to please come down for the next So the Nutley School District is very fortunate to have the support not just of the NEF, but we also receive tremendous support from the Scarpelli Foundation and as well as another group called the Nutley Invitational. And they have provided tremendous funding for our special services program. And here this evening is Mayor Scarpelli representing the Scarpelli Foundation with another generous donation. Thank you, Mr. James. Congratulations to our retirees and the NEF, uh, good teachers and good uh, volunteers. That's what makes our uh, town the way it is. And uh, the Scarpelli Civic Association, over the last eight years, have uh, donated over $40,000 to the school district uh, in scholarship <laughs> and focusing on the special ed department. And we're pleased to present another check for $6,000 and some change uh, for air conditionings for the special ed programs. And also the uh, Nutley Invitational is donating $2,500. So uh, on behalf of both organizations, so I can present you with this check. I said before, that it's not as big as a range check, but you can cash this one. So. <laughs> Personalized certificate from the president, 
an official pin, medallion, or coin, and a congratulatory letter from the President of the United States. We've received that letter for you here tonight. We're going to read it to you. I would like to ask you have um, all five commissioners from the township of Nutley here tonight to honor you. So I'd like to invite down um, all five commissioners, Mayor Scarpelli, Commissioner Evans, Commissioner Tucci, Commissioner Rogers, Commissioner Petraco. Have you met any of these gentlemen before? <laughs> they are, they are our local government. So here, right, coming next to you, one after the other, this is Mayor Scarpelli. Commissioner Evans, Commissioner Tucci, Commissioner Rogers, Commissioner Petraca. And this was such a big deal that they wanted to be here for you and honor you. And for everybody in the audience, I am going to read the letter. Um, it is on the stationery from the White House and it is signed by President Trump. Congratulations on receiving the President's Volunteer Service Award. On behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you for your service to your fellow Americans and to those most in need. Through your dedicated service, you've ensured the continuation of America's unparalleled commitment to improving the lives of others. Over the past year, you've served as a model of the American spirit. Your many hours of service have strengthened the bonds of cooperation and trust that bring people together while helping to address some of the greatest challenges of our times. One of our nation's greatest strengths remains the compassion of our everyday citizens who give so willingly of themselves and their lives for the benefit of others. Each generation of hardworking and kind-hearted volunteers helps to write a new chapter of American greatness, and our nation is proud of you for your commitment to this honorable tradition. As we reflect on your many acts of kindness and charity over this past year, our nation draws inspiration from those who answer the call to help their community and our nation. With your continued efforts to build on our national culture of service, America will proudly remain a land of freedom and opportunity for all. Thank you for your enduring commitment to serving your community and our nation. I trust that you will continue to work for the betterment of others and an even stronger future for the American people. <coughs> Donald Trump, President of the United States of America.
opportunity to acknowledge the volunteer service of Master Kim to our extended day program this year. I'd like to bring up Mrs. Janine Lopinsolo, our Director of Curriculum Instruction Pre-K to 5. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
before about that. So to to um, to uh, reiterate what Dr. Glazer was saying, we found that because of our numbers and the way that our numbers were shifting, that it was almost not productive enough to have that middle level, which we call typically or traditionally call a junior varsity level. That we would be much more productive and, and get much more out of our programs if we combined that and made it a frost soft. So getting back to how we did it, you were a freshman player on the freshman team. There was a there was a I would say the perception out there was that we got freshman sports. We did not get rid of freshman sports. In fact, we probably strengthened our freshman sports program by adding some of those four, five, or six sophomores that need that extra year of development. Now we did this in, in um, soccer, basketball, softball, baseball, and we did it in football. Football was a little bit of a different focus because um, of the way football works and is set up. Our numbers didn't support three levels and we wound up bringing kids up to a junior varsity level, which was could be sometimes dangerous, freshman playing against juniors. But we just didn't have the numbers that we needed to bring them. Bring those guys up. You ready? So what we're going to show you now is the results of the one-year pilot plan. As soon as it comes up, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. <laughs> Just uh, go ahead and which one way All right. So we offer 21 NJSA sanctioned sports. We have three independent sports, and we have two sports that are not sanctioned by the NJSA, crew and cheerleading. This is our 2018-19. You'll see why so last year we had three, we went to two. Every other number there is the levels that we have. The, Numbers with asterisks next to them, wrestling and track, they, that, those are based on your, um, your competitive levels. So you could be a freshman wrestling on varsity team, but if you're not to that level yet, you will be entered into a junior varsity tournament <coughs> or in what they call a track novice events so that you can compete. Our independent sports are, are swimming, gymnastics, and fencing. We do, not, we do not have teams. However, every once in a while, we'll have somebody that wants to compete as a we call individual, and then we would sponsor those people. In fact, we won state championships in both gymnastics and fencing over the course of the last 13 years. In 2017 and 18, our petition numbers were 825 student athletes. That's almost 70% of our student body does something from 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock. All right, they're involved in our sports programs. That number for a group three school is very, very, it is large. And it's a great, great number. Since we condensed and reorganized, we're up to 854 student athletes. So that means those student athletes that got cut from those teams, we found someplace else for them to go, where they found a home in another sport. We have a 3.5% increase in our numbers from last year to this year. I'm going to go through each one of our sports just to show you how it broke down this year. We, in the, in the boys' soccer program, 40 student athletes tried out for the team, all right? We retained 39, one opted out midway through the season. We did not cut anybody. We had 23 people on the varsity team. We had 17 people on the sophomore, uh, fresh soft team. Girls, uh, girls soccer, 45 student athletes tried out. We retained 41, we did not cut anybody. Four student athletes opted out or went someplace else. 22 on the varsity team and 19 on the sophomore, uh, fresh soft team. And as you can see, I'll go through every one, but the numbers kind of remain the same. Girls basketball, we didn't cut anyone, or we cut six people, 27 students came out, we kept 21. We were able to have a varsity team of 12 and a fry soft team. Of nine. Now, when we had these cuts, 
the performance-based cuts. It would be very easy to say, well, why didn't you keep six people and just have 15 people on the sophomore, uh, frost soft team? But because it's a performance-based evaluation, they just were not good enough to make the team. Boys basketball, we had 48 student athletes try out and retained 25. We kept 14 on the varsity team. We kept um, 11 on the, the Frost Soft team. We cut 17, three of those were, were first year seniors that came out for the team. Again, performance based. Oops. Softball, 40 student athletes tried out, we retained 32. We had 16 on the varsity team and 16 on the Frost Soft team. We did cut eight from junior down to freshman. 16 on the Frost Soft team, I think last year when I bring us the, the numbers up, I think maybe we had 11 and probably we ended with 10 or nine. Well, anybody that knows baseball knows you don't play with nine. So when you get to those, 16 is a great number. It's a great number to practice with. It's a great number to run drills with. It's a great number to be able to um, operate with within your season. When we start with these numbers, if we're a concussion away, we're a twisted ankle away, we're you know, a test day away from them dropping one or two below. We finish with that, but that does not mean we necessarily retain those numbers throughout the entire season. Baseball was the one sport we probably would have to look at from year to year. It was the one where we felt as though this year we probably still could have managed with three, with three levels because our numbers were high. <clears throat> but even still with that, we were able to keep 16 kids, or 16 student athletes on the five South team, which was more than last year, and we kept 17 on the varsity team. Here's our comparison. Last year we had three cuts in, in boys soccer, this year we didn't have any. We had 23 on the varsity team, 19 on the frost soft team. So if you see in those numbers there, they're kind of the same. We didn't cut anybody this year. I cannot tell you why we had so many kids try out for the team last year as opposed to this year. But I know that with 23 kids on the varsity team and 17 kids on the frost soft team, we're still in the same ballpark as we were. Girls soccer, we didn't make any cuts. We had less kids try out. We had 19 kids on the Frost Soft team, 20 kids on the freshman team last year, uh, the freshman team last year, so it's comparable. It stayed, stayed somewhat the same. Boys basketball, our numbers remain the same. Girls basketball, we didn't cut anybody last year, but you see we have, our numbers are still the same. We cut this year, okay? We were able to keep two more kids on the varsity. Uh, on the varsity level, which was able us to keep two more kids on the lower level. Softball, our numbers are, are almost identical, but you'll see here, last year we kept 14 on the varsity, we put two more up to keep 16 on the varsity. Frost soft, we kept 13 on the frost, freshman team last year, we kept three more this year. Baseball, that's the one, like I said, that's the one caveat here where we could probably maneuver three levels. Football last year we had 66 kids try out. We kept 41. There's our breakdown for three levels. This year 54 tried out. We kept 36 on the varsity team. We kept 19 on the freshman team. Five of those 19 were sophomores. Can't play a freshman schedule with 14 kids in football. Here's some interesting numbers. Our goal is to get as many games possible for these sub varsity teams. This year, boys soccer, this is sub varsity now. The boys soccer team played 17. We had 20 scheduled. Two were canceled due to opponents' lack of numbers. Meaning we would get a call at 10 o'clock in the morning and say, we don't have enough kids to play. Girls soccer, we had 19 games scheduled. Four of them were canceled due to lack of numbers. So they still only played 14 games, which is two games more than they played last year. Boys basketball, 19 played, four games canceled, two due to lack of home lack of numbers, two were weather related. Girls basketball played 19 sub varsity games and they only had one cancellation and that was due to weather. Softball played 15 games, we scheduled 23, five of our opponents bailed out at the last minute. And we still played more games than we played last year. 
At baseball, we played 22 games, we had 26 scheduled, three were canceled due to weather, and one was rescheduled due to the county tournament. So the kids are playing more games, and they're getting more opportunities to play. They're getting more time on task, they're getting more individualized instructions by their coaches. Uh, we are becoming a better program because of the changes that we made. And again, to reiterate, our numbers did not go down. That was the, the, the one criticism of what was going to happen, that the numbers were going to go down. It did not go down, in fact, they jumped up. So those kids that you see here, we said we did make cuts, and our cuts were minimal. They all found some place to go in our own cellar. Any questions? Right. Fantastic. Everybody enjoyed, everybody enjoyed the weekend. Enjoy the weekend, the weekend. And have a great summer. Thank you. That is our last presentation, so board members will go back up and uh, continue on with the meetings. Thank you. It's at 9 o'clock in the morning. 
It is scheduled to be on the oval, but that of course is weather permitting. We don't acknowledge that because it's going to be a gorgeous day and we're going to be on the oval at 9 o'clock a.m. Um, the last day of attendance for all staff and students is Wednesday, June 26th. All of our students in all schools have single session days on Monday, June 24th, Tuesday, June 25th, Wednesday, June 26th. And then our Nutley High School students will have their graduation that night, Wednesday, June 26th at 6 o'clock p.m. on the Oval. Not even saying weather committee, just happening. Um, so you know, we'll all still be here. We have Board of Education meetings in July and August, but we do want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a wonderful and safe summer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Glazer. Um, so we do not have any further reports from the board secretary this evening, or our, our student is not here this evening. So we're going to move over to our committee reports. Uh, first one's going to be Mr. Kaczynski with admin. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Thank you. The administration, administration committee met on June the 10th. Um, we talked about the June 4th primary election was discussed as well as future plans for handicap accessibility at Radcliffe School and moving the polls from Nutley High School to the Nutley Library. The committee reviewed current numbers for re-registration and discussed the next, step, the next step of a hearing before the board BOE prior to disenrolling students. This process will be completed for the July Board of Ed meeting. The committee also reviewed the current kindergarten numbers, Radcliffe and Washington School numbers are closed. Yannickel is nearing capacity. Dr. Glazer pre previewed the presentation for tonight's BOE meeting. Dr. Glazer reviewed the BOE and district goals for 2018 and 19 and documented evidence of completion and preparation for the BOE retreat to be held this summer. Mr. Riley and Mr. Carnesano shared their notes for the NJ, NJ School Board Association workshop they attended on safety and security. Mrs. James provided an update on the mobile classrooms from Washington and Spring Garden Schools. Dr. Glazer reviewed the process for the coordinator of world language interviews, the status of the EAN contract negotiations, as well as other personnel, personnel data. The next meeting of the administration committee is July 10th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kaczynski. Uh, next one up is going to be academic. Uh, Ms. Dan Jack Moore. Thank you, Mr. President. The Academic Committee met on June 12th. Uh, System Manager Ian Wiemeister uh, previewed the proposed template for the new district website. The new format will be live July 1st, and content will continue to be added over time. Athletic Director Joe Pyro pre previewed tonight's presentation regarding athletic levels and answered committee questions. Ms. Lopezolo shared the use of Schoology for kindergarten screening that has been implemented this year including additional screening for English language learning students. The committee reviewed current numbers for re-registration and discussed the next steps of a hearing before the BOE prior to disenrolling students. The committee also reviewed the current kindergarten numbers and Dr. Blazer reviewed the proposal for vaping study and presentation by local medical students at John Walker Middle School. Dr. Blazer reviewed the BOE and district goals for 2018-19 and also uh, preparation for the BOE retreat that will be held this summer. Ms. Zara shared her notes for, from the NJ School Board Association workshop she attended on safety and security. Ms. Lopez Solo reviewed field trip and professional development requests, and Dr. Glazer reviewed the process of, for the coordinator of world language interviews and the status of the EAN contract negotiations, as well as personnel updates. The next committee meeting will be held on Wednesday, July 10th. Thank you, Mrs. Dan Martin. Uh, we're going to go over to finance now with uh, Mr. Ferreira. Mr. Ferreira. Did I say Mr. Did I say you said Mr. Ryan there, I think. No. no, I said Mr. Ferreira. Uh, I'm hearing, sorry. <laughs> You'll leave <read> it? <laughs> uh, the committee met on June 11th. Uh, the committee discussed the ongoing work at the Nutley High School Auditorium, including the status of the building code inspections. A meeting was to be scheduled with the contractor to review open items and a projected completion date. 
The maintenance staff is updating the two single bathrooms outside the moratorium. Uh, the committee reviewed the current work orders, most of which continue to be plumbing issues. Mr. Nicolette briefed the committee on summer projects, including the creation of a new life skills class at the, at the high school and the possibility of refurbishing another group bathroom. Mrs. Yamans and Mr. Moore reviewed tonight's finance resolutions, including transfers, contract renewals, and transfers from capital and maintenance reserves. Mrs. Yamans explained the need for resolutions authorizing potential deposits to the reserves pending the outcome of our June 30th audit. Mrs. Quirk updated the committee on the safety and security seminar, which was sponsored by the New Jersey School Boards Association, which she and a few other board members attended. Mrs. Yamans also informed the committee that the new food service management company, Pomptonian, was going to meet with the current food service workers to provide them with offers of employment. Uh, the committee talked about pending donations from the Scarpelli Foundation and then the invitation for our special ed programs. And Mr. Memorial reported on multiple professional development seminars he and Mrs. James attended during the annual New Jersey Business Administrators Conference. Our next meeting is scheduled for July 16th. Thank you, Mr. Ferrer. <coughs> We have policy. It's going to be Ms. Eric Zero. Thank you, Mr. President. The policy committee met June 12th. We discussed, the committee reviewed and updated the organizational chart, policy number 1110, if anybody wants to look it up. Dr. Glazer and Mrs. Lopensell will review the retention policies and regulations, number 5410 and 5411. These were updated to reflect standards based on grade reporting and a consistent timeline for communicating with parents and or guardians. The new earned sick leave legislation was discussed, which is policy 1642, which was tabled until the next meeting. Next meeting of the Tomac Policy Committee will be Wednesday, July 10th. And I would just like to encourage any other members, even if you're not on the Policy Committee, to review any of them and give us input would always be great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eric. <clears throat> we now come to the portion of our meeting where we allow members of the public to address the board. In this section, we allow questions or comments on only the resolutions addressed in tonight's agenda. Our board regulation 601 allot 20 minutes for these communications. Each person shall be limited to three minutes and we ask you to try to stay within this requirement. The speakers may speak more than once only after others wishing to speak on the topic of conversion. All statements will be directed to me as a chairperson and no one may address board members individually. Please, please be reminded that if your statement is too lengthy, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or redundant, your participation may be terminated. Please remember to always state your name and address each and every time you address the board and sign over Mrs. Kakuza before you take the microphone. Will the first person uh, please step forward who is wishing to be heard this evening? Okay, seeing none. Mrs. Danchek Martin, would you take academic, please? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to move academic resolutions one and two as written. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mr. Kuzak. Mrs. Danchek Morton? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clerk? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Cardicella? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski, would you take you uh, administration, please? Yes, sir, Mr. President. I move administration resolutions one and two. <clears throat> Need a second. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mr. Kuzak. Mrs. Danchek Morton? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Uh, Mr. Farrer, would you take uh, resolutions 1 through 39? Yes, Mr. President. I move <coughs> finance resolutions 1 through 39. Second. We're going to open up the discussion. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, bringing everyone's attention to the, our 30th resolution, which is our memorandum for our teachers. And I just wanted to make a statement to the teachers here tonight. Um, we said early on that you know, we are a partnership, and sometimes partnerships have their ups and downs. I'm glad to see that we've come together once again to be able to fulfill a contract for the teachers. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do for 
us on a daily basis. We can't have presentations in the support of a community without a strong commitment from our teachers, our administrators, and, and all of us as a community behind you. And we appreciate everything you do for us each and every day. Thank you. I'll open it up to anyone else who would like to make any comments. Yes, Mr. President, just to follow up on that, I <coughs> certainly appreciate the, um, the hard work of our Board of Education and, and our teachers in coming to an agreement that um, that serves us all well. I appreciate the, the job that everyone does. And, and again, I just want to publicly thank you for getting to where we are now. Any other comments, discussion? One more here, just give me one second. I just have a comment regarding the third sentence. It's not the direct answer. Uh, more of a comment than I thought you were going to mention. We didn't have any idea. Sorry, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, as regards to number 36, I just wanted to, again, not tell on the broken record, but if we could put into conversation possibly the money that we're transferring from the surplus into the capital reserve and securing a secure entrance for Yanukov, that could just be put into discussion at some point. I appreciate it. Thank you. Noted, Ms. Errol. Thank you. And uh, there's actually one more resolution, uh, Ms. Yamins, if you can just clarify for me on 33 on the professional appointments. Um, there's three of them here that are pending for the RFQ. Uh, can you just, uh, if I'm correct, that these contracts will uh, get renewed on July 1st. And so we're moving these resolutions pending the outcome of the RFQ, so if you can kind of explain that to the, to the public and also to some of the board members who had some questions about. It. Yes, professional appointments, while while they show up on a resolution for a school year, they are actually at-will employees to the Board of Education. So their contracts can be terminated at any point during that time. The Board of Education put out RFQs for these services at the end of April, and they're in the process of reviewing those responses and will be conducting interviews for architects, attorneys, and the athletic physician. And until that point in time when those interviews are completed and they make a decision as to which professional services they want to award to which firms, we are continuing with the current professionals that we are using so that we continue with any business items that come up where we need these services. Thank you, Ms. James. Any further discussion on anything in the finance resolutions? We'll call Ms. Kabuta. Mrs. Danchek Morton? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? I vote yes, and I have to abstain on number 30. Mr. Brown? Yes, abstaining to number 30. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Quirk? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes, and all but 30. Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Carter Seller? 
Yes. Mr. President, um, I know I am number two, I believe I also need to abstain. Okay, so can we? Right. Mr. Kakuza, can you amend uh, Mr. Ferraro's um, yes vote on number two of the personnel? Yes, <laughs> And yes, to abstain on number two. Mr. DeVay, are you seeing that all four correct for it? So the remaining uh, personnel items are testimonials, which we're actually going to move individually as the board members read them. So the first testimonial uh, is going to be read by Ms. Danchek Martin. Right, Mr. President, I'd like to move um, res personnel resolution number five, testimonial administrator. Whereas Ms. Robin Tal has tendered her resignation as coordinator of physical education and health effective June 30th, 2019, and has signified her intention of retiring from active service. And whereas Ms. Pop has served as a teacher and coordinator of physical health and education in the Nutley Public Schools for a period of 26 years, and whereas through the years, Ms. Powell has exemplified the finest qualities of her profession at all times. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education expressed to Ms. Powell its deep appreciation for her long and faithful service and extends to her best wishes for continued health and happiness, and be it further resolved that this resolution be made part of the minutes of this meeting. You so move? I so move. Yes, sir. We need a second. Discussion? Roll call, Mr. Kuzma. Mr. Sanchez Martin? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Ms. Sauer? Yes. Mr. Carnicello? Yes. Mr. Ferrara, would you uh, take number six, please? Yes, Mr. President. Whereas Mr. Philip Nicolette has tendered his resignation as building and grounds manager effective June 30th, 2019, and has signified his intention to retire from active, active service. And whereas Mr. Nicolette has served as a maintenance and buildings and ground manager in the Nutley Public Schools for a period of 28 years. And whereas through the years, Mr. Nicolette has exemplified the finest qualities of his profession at all times. Now therefore, be a resolved that the Board of Education expresses to Mr. Nicolette its deep appreciation for his long and faithful service and extends to him its, its best wishes for continued health and happiness and be further resolved that this resolution be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mr. Mr. Danchek Martin? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Riley, would you take number seven, please? Yes, Mr. President. Whereas the following teachers have tendered their resignations effective June 30, 2019, and have signified their intention of retiring from active service, and whereas through the years they exemplified the finest qualities of their profession at all times. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education expresses its deep appreciation of their long and faithful service and extends its best wishes for continued health and happiness, and be it further resolved that this resolution be made part of the minutes of this meeting. And they would be Cheryl Holly, 19 years, Linda Miscaratola, 28 years, Michael Noma, 15 years, Richard Noonan, 21 years, Eileen O'Mara, 26 years, and Louise Walk, 22 years, I assume. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Ms. Kuzma. Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Pizzello? Yes. Mr. Cornicello? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski, would you take number one, please? Yes, sir, Mr. President. I move the testimonial whereas maintenance whereas Mr. Richard Bocato has tendered his resignation as maintenance worker effective June 30th, 2019 and he has signified his intention of retiring from active service. 
And whereas Mr. Bucato has worked in the Nutley School, Nutley Public Schools for a period of 29 and a half years, and whereas through the years Mr. Bucato has exemplified the finest qualities of the maintenance position at all times, now therefore be resolved that the Board of Education expresses to Mr. Bucato its deepest appreciation for his long and faithful service and extends to him his best wishes for continued health and happiness. Be it further resolved that this resolution be made part of the minutes of this meeting, I so move. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mr. Cusa. Mrs. Chair Martin? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Quirk? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Ms. Arrow? Yes. Mr. Carnicella? Yes. Ms. Arrow, would you take uh, number nine? Yes, Mr. President. I'd like to move personal resolution number nine, whereas Ms. Joanne Follett has tendered her resignation as custodian effective June 30th, 2019, and has signified her intention of retiring from active service. And whereas Ms. Follett has worked in the Nutley Public Schools for a period of 33 years, and whereas through these years she has exemplified the finest qualities of the custodial position at all times. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education expresses to Ms. Follett its deep appreciation for her long and faithful service and extends to her its best wishes for continued health and happiness. And be it further resolved that this resolution be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mr. Capuzzo. Mrs. Danchek Martin? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Quirk? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Ms. Arrow? Yes. Mr. Cornicello? <coughs> yes. Mr. Riley, would you take number 10, please? Yes, Mr. President, where is Ms. McElhinney Mara has tenured her resignation as District Secretary to the Superintendent for Personnel effective June 30, 2019, which signified her intention of retiring from active service, and whereas Mrs. Mara has worked in the Nutley Public Schools for a period of 26 years, and whereas through the years Mrs. Mara has exemplified the finest qualities of the secretarial position at all times. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Board of Education expresses to Mrs. Mara its deep appreciation for her long and faithful service extends to her its best wishes for continued help and happiness. Be it further resolved that this resolution be made part of the minutes of this meeting. So, sir. Discussion? Roll call, Mrs. Kakuza. Mrs. Danchek Martin? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Sarah? Yes. Mr. Cardicella? Yes. Mr. DeMeo, would you take number 11, please? Yes, Mr. President. Whereas Ms. Carol, Mrs. Carol Bellis has tendered, tendered her resignation as a non-structural aid effective June 30th, 2019, and has signified her intention of retiring from active service, and whereas Ms. Bellis has worked in Nutley Public Schools for a period of 18 years, and whereas through the years Ms. Bellis has exemplified the finest qualities of the aid position at all times. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Board of Education expresses to Mrs. Bowser its deep appreciation for her long and faithful service and extends to her its best wishes for continued health and happiness. And be it further resolved that this resolution is <coughs> a part of the minutes of this meeting. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mrs. Cusick. Mrs. Danchek Martin? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Yes. And our final for the evening, uh, Ms. Arrow, number 12. Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to move personal resolution number 12, whereas Mrs. Nadine Miola has tendered her resignation as paraprofessional, effective June 30th, 2019, and has signified her intention of retiring from active service. And whereas Mrs. Miola has worked in the Nutley Public Schools for a period of 18 years, and whereas through the years, Mrs. Mayola has exemplified the finest qualities of the paraprofessional position at all times. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education expresses to Mrs. Mayola its deep appreciation for her long and faithful service and extends to her its best wishes for continued health and happiness. And be it further resolved that this resolution be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mrs. Kakuza. Mrs. Danchek-Morton? Yes. Mr. DeMeo? Yes. Mr. Ferrara? Yes. Mr. 
Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clerk? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Ms. Aaron? Yes. Mr. Conticello? Yes. And we're going to move to your yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we have policy. Uh, Ms. Aaron, please. Yes, Mr. President. I'd like to move policy resolution one as stated. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Mrs. Capuza? Mrs. Sanchez Martin? Yes. Yes. Mrs. Kamea? Yes. Mr. Ferraro? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Monticello? Yes. In this section, we allow questions or comments on all school related matters. Our regulation will allow 30 minutes for these communications. Again, each person shall be limited to three minutes, and we ask you to try to stay within this requirement. As stated earlier, all statements can be directed to me as a chairperson, and no one may address board members individually. Please remind me that if your statement is too lengthy, abusive, obscene, irrelevant, or redundant, your participation may be terminated. Please remember to always state your name and address each and every time you address the board and sign in with Mrs. Kukuza before you take the microphone. Will the first person wishing to be heard on all school-related matters please step forward? Okay. Seeing none. Any old business to come before the board? Any new business? I'm going to start off by, uh, we talked a lot about the school board's uh, session that took place uh, last Friday down in, uh, it was very far away, West Windsor. <laughs> it was very far away. Um, but it was, it was actually, for me, it was actually a very good refresher because uh, I've been working closely as, as much of the board that's been here since January with the safety and security updates within the building, the district, and really, you know, statewide and nationwide with everything that's been going uh, going on. So, uh, for me, it was really a great refresher to be able to sit there and also have discussions with other school board members from other districts to see how they're handling certain challenges that they're facing. Uh, I was able to offer some ideas of what we've done, as well as uh, taking feedback from, from other districts. So I thought it was a, a very good session for me uh, from a refresher side. But I also wanted to open it up. Uh, we had Eric Zara as well as Mr. Riley and Ms. Work at that uh, session as well. I don't know if they wanted to add a few uh, words in, but you're more than welcome to the microphone yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we started off uh, the, um, the uh, training by um, having a session called the Critical Infrastructure Bureau. It was from um, Homeland Security, the FBI, the state police have all come together to work on um, increasing school security and all their ideas. And one of the things that they really stressed was about um, mental illness. And they gave us staggering uh, statistics. 25% um, of all school shooters have had a mental health a diagnosis. 61% have had um, mental ish issues. 90% have had suicidal ideation. One third of all school shooters have had a manifesto. And um, it, it, it just goes to show how important it is for us to, as a board and as a district, to really uh, focus in on the mental health aspect of, of not just securing our, our doors and, and windows or whatever, it's just understanding the child, the family, and giving a support to, to those that, that need us, especially families that, are, that have children that have needs in, this, in these areas, and that can pose a threat not just to themselves, but to uh, many others. Um, just as you have seen last week, uh, there were two incidents. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to come up with some strategies in order to uh, address these concerns. Thank you, Ms. Ward. So as part of the training, we were able to break into sessions. So we divided and conquered, and everybody went to a different session, trying to get as much information as we possibly could. And one of the sessions I went to was to prepare for lockdown drills, which we do do. Um, but some of the ideas they had to implement, which are on our list of things to implement, one of the things that caught me most was there was a group or a vendor that was there that spoke about uh, the use of blue lights going off when you're preparing for a lockdown drill for a lot of reasons, but the one reason that really got to me was for the needs of special ed children. Special ed is growing so much across the state and Nutley, everywhere nowadays. 
that for students that might not understand what's being said over the PA system when they're telling them there's a lockdown, or might be deaf and can't hear it, or get distracted easily and don't know what's going on, it's a, it's a way for them, if they can't communicate verbally or if they can't hear what's going on, it's a way for them to get the same information real time and know everything that everybody else is, that there's an immediate threat, you need to lock down, you need to get someplace, and you need to follow the lockdown drugs. And when they were explaining it to us, for all aspects, it's a great idea, under 20 seconds, everybody's notified, all of these things that come along with it. But for the needs of special ed children, I just, I thought that that, that awareness of coming to that is very important right now, and especially for, like I said, the growing up special ed population, and it's only gonna grow more. We see the numbers every year. We see our needs to grow our programs, and it was something that just caught my attention. Everything, it was an amazing conference, caught my attention. But this caught my attention in a different way, so this is something that I wanted to put out there and share. That was something important that I took from the conference. Thank you, Ms. Allen. I just want to say that uh, it was an eye-opening experience. I learned a lot. Uh, and just a couple of my takeaways. My, my first major takeaway is I had no idea how many incidents there are just in New Jersey alone, over 900 last year incidents. Uh, just reinforces my position on the fact that we need security in the elementary schools as well. And I don't think there's anybody that was at that conference, there were hundreds of people there, I don't think there's anybody that, that walked away feeling any different. Every district was acutely sensitive uh, to the need for security in our schools to protect our kids and our staff. Secondarily, uh, vaping has become a huge issue now, and we learned about uh, systems to uh, help discover vaping, whether it's in bathrooms or locker rooms or wherever. So we're, we discussed that at the administration committee meeting the other day, and that's something we'll be looking at. Uh, and the other issue that, that concerns me is the type of security that we have. My, my, one of my main issues with our current security, and I'm, I'm obviously pro-security, and I'm, I'm for uh, these guards that we have in the high school and the elementary school, but my, my issue is I have to get a better understanding of how we're interacting with the local police department. And uh, I'm, I'm under the impression now that when, when the Nutley Police Department has active shooter training, uh, our people that we have in the middle school and high school are not part of that training. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. President, but that, that's my understanding. But I, I need to get my arms around that and just see if, it's, if we're better served uh, with our current situation uh, where we have people that report directly to us or go through our local police department uh, so that they can be involved in the active, train, uh, active shooter training as well, plus the insurance, their insurance would cover it. They would report to the police chief, uh, to our superintendent, and to the building uh, principal. So those are just a few things that, that we learned. Uh, I have a long way to go on this. I don't profess to know it all, but I want to learn as much as I can in the shortest amount of time. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Robin. Um, what I will state is, is that some of that information uh, with regard to how we communicate with local police uh, would definitely not be a, an open conversation for the public since there are certain security pieces that we would not be able to reveal. Uh, however, I will certainly make sure that we can uh, set up a time where we can sit down and have a conversation about the memorandum of agreement, how we communicate with the local police, and how, is, how the training is being conducted for our staff members alongside with the police department. Any other new business to come before the board? Whereas the Board of Education will be discussing matters exempt from public discussion pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 12, now therefore be resolved that the Board of Education recess to close executive session at this time to discuss student matters, personnel, and property acquisition. Be it further resolved that the results of this discussion will be made public by inclusion on the agenda of the subsequent meeting of the Board of Education when the reasons for discussing such matters in closed session no longer exist. Uh, can we have a motion to go into close? All in favor? Thank you, everyone.